Well, like Joey Adams said, if it weren't for the fact that the TV set and the French were so far apart, some of you will not get any exercise at all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are not moving. Our perception of movement is altered. We don't understand it, and worse, we avoid it at all costs. Remote controls, elevators, cars, online purchases. Our muscles are getting weaker, making our bodies more and more dysfunctional. I could be the only person in the country who would thank God every time the electricity goes off. Because finally, people are taking the stairs. The human body was built to move, to hunt, to survive extreme weather conditions, to fight. However, a sedentary lifestyle, as a result of civilization, has weakened our muscles, making us a lot more vulnerable, much more prone to injury and sickness. Now, look at the numbers. The more you sit, the more you are likely to die. <laughs> and the less you move, the more you are likely to get sick. Now look at your day. The numbers say that if you sit more than six hours, you actually double your risk of dying. You sit like around eight hours per day. That's not standing you having an eight hour job. So, we don't understand the weight. I'll tell you in the story. It even got medical professionals naming syndromes out of our social dependencies and technological patterns. The story is, I was on my way to North Korea with the Lebanon national football team in 2008. And you can imagine the long flights you have to take to get there, the longest, three flights actually, and the longest was from Dubai to Beijing, eight hours. Now, by the fourth hour, my left knee started to hurt. I wasn't about much worried about my knee as I was worried about my players. So I was jumping around the plane, asking the guys, does anybody feel knee pain? So, surprisingly, the ones who were still awake uh, told me that they were feeling nothing uncomfortable around the knees. So I got me thinking, why me? Well, the answer is simple. It's because, it's because I, have, I don't have as strong thigh muscles as they do. Taking this knee problem as an example, it's called chondromalacia. It's mainly a problem of the kneecap, mostly due to weakness in your quadriceps or the most frontal thighs. So sufferers of this condition find it hard or painful to keep their knee bent for a long time. So it got named the economy class syndrome, <laughs> or the stand-up syndrome, or I don't know if you should call it the Marmalade syndrome. <laughs> You'll tell me. Okay. So, as the rule of evolution, use it or lose it. Ladies, if you don't start moving your butt soon, I might have, I might have some bad news for you. You might be losing an ass of yours. So, let's say, and the next time somebody tells you, sarcastically, to move your butt, move it. And I'll tell you all. Let's say we ask scientists in disciplines that study the human movement, such, such as biomechanics or kinesiology, about the strongest muscle in the human body. For some reason, they don't seem to agree, and you get plenty of answers. One of the answers would be the myocardium, or the muscle of the heart. It is working non-stop as long as you live. That's a non-stop workout. So it must be pretty strong. But, with a single T. <laughs> it generates its own stimulus, and we don't have control over it. So it does not count. Another pretty good answer would be the muscle that or the muscle that helps you chew. It helps you force your bite. And it has its swim around, always present to help it. They work together mostly, practically most of the time. And together they are capable of generating enough force for you to break your own teeth. That's really impressive. But I'm still not very convinced. However, 
a big part of the answers would be the gluteus maximus or your butt muscle. Because of the surface it covers, its thickness, it means so many muscle, muscle fibers concentrated in one place, and the long lever arm it has around the hip. So, if you compare it to all other skeletal muscles, it actually makes sense. Now, think of an engine. The bigger the engine, the more energy it consumes. Now, the next time you want to have a pretty good workout and to maximize your caloric loss, now you know which muscle to target. Okay, that's reason number one. I'll show you reason number two. Because we are seated most of the time, we did actually lose our ability to functionally use our butt muscle. We forgot how to use it. It is what Brett Contreras called, who is, who is a world-renowned trainer, it, it, he calls it gluteal amnesia. Now, how do you use your butt muscle? I'll tell you. You use your butt muscle when you want to forcefully extend your hip or your hip backwards. Let's say you are going sprinting uphill, late for class, or you're taking quick steps up the stairs. Okay. You remember these stairs, don't you? You remember these stairs? Now they have been rid of them, but they are still there. I have seen most of you suffer on the way up these stairs. And let me tell you, my friends, it does not look good. <laughs> Actually, on these stairs were the first idea I came. I need to tell these people how important activity is. And I'm a student environment, so the strongest weapon I have is education. Why not have a BS at PEB in kinesiology? or human performance, or sports science. They exist everywhere else. Why not they be? I discussed the idea with a couple of faculty members, a couple of deans. Everybody seemed impressed, but for some reason, they did not encourage me to go through. Stating a number of problems, such as you will need a department, faculty members, research, funds, etc. So it's like five to 10 years from becoming a reality. I cannot wait five, five, ten years, it's a matter of life and death. So, here's when the second idea came in. Why don't we, as AUB, host an international program that has already done all this work? And voila. Now, I can safely say that after nine months of working on the project, soon enough, AUB will be signing an agreement with the International Fitness Professionals Association, IFPA, making it possible for the UB community to have access to courses and certificates in sports education and fitness on campus for the first time at the Hustle Center. Wow. Now, for the men in the audience, I say, if you have time to watch 10 videos online, you have time for workout. <laughs> and for the ladies, ladies, please. <laughs> Skinny girls look good in clothes. However, fit girls look and function with or without it. <laughs> And please lift some weights. Do not worry about bulking up. It's a myth. The women that you see posing for bodybuilding competitions, they are on anabolic steroids to maximize muscle mass for competition purposes. This will not ever happen to you. It is guaranteed. Okay? It's a scientific fact. Okay? All you will have, what you will have, is a toned up body. Which is good. Now, at the end of this, I have, I have two words. I have two words for all of you. Please, lift some weights and squat deep. It's the only way that you can, or actually, it's one of the ways that you can use your butt muscle among many, many other benefits. Two, with a capital T. Train good, train often, train hard, and train others. Thank you.